Okay, so I'm here with Martin Broberg, who's Professor of International Development Law at the University of Copenhagen. He's also a visiting scholar here at the Lauterpass Centre in Cambridge, and before becoming a professor, uh, was also a, a civil servant. How would you describe British influence, drawing on your experiences of being a, a civil servant within the EU? Right. Um, the European Union has these 28 member states, and there are quite big differences. The Dane's perspective is very much like, like the, the British one. So when I was working in the civil service in Denmark for the Minister of Justice and negotiating on behalf of Denmark, we would normally follow the British lead. And in this regard, it's really important to, to, to be aware that the British are really punching, you might say, about its weight. Britain is one of three major member states. And at the same time, Britain is more stronger than the other um, main member states. So what I found surprising was that the British Civil Service, Whitehall, had not only the, the resources, the manpower, but also the skills to, to really run and drive forward the negotiations to, in the interest of the British, but also, of course, as we were alike uh, in interest, in the interest of the Danes, the Swedes, and also the Finns. Um, so we would normally follow the British whenever there was something coming up. And the, it was not so that you had a fight between the member states. You would find that, that the British would drive the negotiations and the opponent would very often be the Commission. So we had this very reluctant British, very reluctant Danish perspective on the number of issues. And we would find that the outcome was very much be what the British had wanted. Um, and I think that is uh, important also from a, a Danish perspective. Of course, we really use the British, so to say, as the one spearheading the negotiations and we would simply not always be in agreement, of course, but we would try to, 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 to support the British as, as best we could. Mm, so why do you think the British press has this idea that Britain has no influence within the EU? I guess that that is partly because if you are going to, to win all these battles that are going on in Brussels, honestly, uh, on a daily basis, if you go come out and show that you have won all the battles, you're not going to win the next one. So you have to keep a low profile, um, which means that probably I shouldn't say it so here. But, but really, I was really impressed by, by the British well, Whitehall, the British Civil Service. They really drove the things forward. They were always very well prepared. They had a lot of people working on the topics. I would work part time on one. I know there was a small department in the British uh, Civil Service working on the same topic. And if they came out and said, right, look, we managed to, to squeeze the commission into the corner, that would mean that the Commission next time and some of the other member states would probably not be as willing to be squeezed into the corner. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I think it's for very good reasons why you don't come forward as a diplomat saying that you have won um, rather than the country. You pretend that you have not won so you can win the next game battle also, obviously. Okay. Um, and do you have any views about um, the impact of Brexit? So if the UK votes to leave in, in June, what the, might be the consequence of that for Danish-Anglo relations with Denmark? Well, from the Danish perspective, that would be a disaster, honestly, mm -hmm. because since we are so much alike, aligned with the British viewpoints, um, and since we don't have the resources, that would basically mean that we would have to, to find a, another way of pushing our views through, which is likely not to, to happen, really. Um, so there'll be a vacuum if the British were to leave, and that vacuum has to be filled. And we will probably see a, what I would call a more integrationist approach from the European Union side, because then you don't have the more realist, if I might put it like that, approach of the British, of the Danes, um, which means that you'll find a, a, a different policy, I, I assume. That would be most likely, I, I would guess. And is there something that you think ought to be better communicated to the general public in anticipation of the referendum? I think that what you really need in this referendum debate going on is that we find today that Britain has a lot of influence and that influence will be lost. British influence is really power. Britain is in the negotiation room at the moment and that power, if you're leaving that room, is lost. And what is coming in, in place of that? Um, I don't know, but I don't see Britain being strong outside the European Union as compared to, to the present situation. Thank you very much. Welcome.